Egész. Hey guys, today we're going to be installing a gear shift sensor. If you have a mid drive, I totally recommend putting one of these on it. If you're doing an install yourself, put one on it. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not too difficult. You just need a couple specialty tools, maybe just one even. If you're new to this channel, check out uh, my other videos. <laughs> and subscribe to my videos. I do a bunch of e-bike stuff, uh, solar panel stuff, electric motorcycle stuff. I'm into that type of thing. So if you're into stuff like that, check out my other videos. But this this video is all about gear shift sensors. We're gonna take your, you're gonna find this gear shift sensor that comes off of the motor. Looks like a brake cutoff. And you're gonna plug that in. Okay, that's plugged in. Now you wanna make sure that this cable is going back towards there. You're gonna find your gear cut, your gear cable, here it is. So, we're gonna take that off. And you're gonna to have to take off this little uh, ferrule end. Cut it off with this, you're gonna need a cable cutter. I recommend a bicycle cable cutter. You could use electrical ones, stuff like that, but eh, I don't know. Sometimes they, they could ruin them. I've made that mistake before, tried to cheap out, and it ends up, just get a good quality bicycle one. Okay, so we get that off. So what I like to do, is it comes with a little, this little plastic piece here. I'm going to put that, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna feed that, I'm gonna try to put it right in here. That's gonna fit real nice like. But now we're gonna have excess cabling. So you're gonna need to trim, you're gonna need to cut a little bit of this off. For the amount that we're adding here, we're gonna need to cut that off there. Kinda gauge it right about there. And then you're gonna have, so inside there's just a little piece of plastic and there's metal and then there's more rubber plastic on the outside. You wanna make sure that that is, this actually was a really clean sweep. A lot of times you just find a little pinhole and just make sure that it's a clean hole that you're putting in because sometimes there's a little plastic tube inside there that can get pinched so you want to make sure that that's open and clear this one is good i got lucky i don't really need to do anything else here so i can put the ferrule cap on here now feeding this through here can be difficult make sure your ends of your cable gear are not splayed out otherwise it's not going to feed through here it's got to be real tight and I like to find the way that this is spun and just spin it clockwise as you feed it through. I'm gonna need to clip off the end of this because it's it's splayed. Okay, now that I cut it with that cable cutter, gives it a nice clean edge. So now I'm gonna feed it through here and I'm going to try to go counterclockwise with it. So when it comes out, it doesn't get caught up on anything. No, nope, it did. Okay, and so sometimes this might happen. <laughs> because there's a kink, there's a bend on this cable, usually I can do it without getting it all splayed, but one little one little wire on here can get caught up and just ruin the whole thing. You don't wanna reuse this if you've got a broken or splayed cable. So we're just gonna replace this, it's not a big deal. They're cheap. So I'm gonna replace this cable and carry on. Okay, so I cut off the frilly part of this. I was able to re salvage this. Um, and you're just gonna feed it through. Just find it in there. And then go, try to feed it clockwise and just give it some steady pressure. Hopefully it doesn't splay out. Okay, so then this will just fit in that little phrase on there and then the rest of this you want to kind of sometimes you got to trim sometimes you got to trim housing that goes through and then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know reset up your shifting which is not very difficult I'll probably have a video out on how to do that and you just want to feed this through it always helps to have your barrel adjuster all the way in so you have some room to adjust it. Make sure it's in the highest gear. And then just keep pressure on it, tighten this up. And then you're gonna wanna put another uh, ferrule cap on the end there. And yeah, that's how you do it. And then obviously just cable maintenance. Just find a wire, if you could find a wire to have this go with, obviously you're not gonna do this one because it goes to a dead end, but I would just have it hug this Hug this tube like this and just zip tie it all the way through. Make sure it doesn't hit any, you know, the chain, the chain ring, 
the tire. Um, try to get it snug either right on the very top or on the very bottom. Probably on the very bottom because then you're not going to see it. And then just try to, you know, you want to hug the lines. Use use the bike so that it doesn't, you know, you don't want it to like stick out here. If you have this, then you got these extra lines and it draws attention to it that this is a homemade bike. But if you could keep it along the frame, now all of a sudden it doesn't look so bad. It's your discretion, it's an art form. How much time you wanna spend on it, it's totally up to you. I recommend spending a little bit more time than less time, because it definitely makes it look better. There you go, gear shift sensor installed. Really all you need is a pair of cable cutters, bicycle grade, get either a Park Tool or a Pedro's. Those are pretty much the only two brands that I would recommend you could get a cheap one you could buy one at home depot even i've done that i think it lasted for about three or four cuts and then it just went bad these are like maybe five or ten more dollars but they'll last a lot longer so i just definitely recommend getting one that's made for bicycles all right hopefully that helped you out i'm not going to bore you with tying this in because you know what that's like so hopefully this helped you let me know if you have any questions 